Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this hour. We ask you to bless us right now in the name of Jesus. Let your word go forth in power. And, oh, God, let it help those that hear it and be blessed in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. And we give in reference on tonight to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our presiding Bishop Charles E. Blake and the entire General Ruit, praise God, and the presidium of the Church of God in Christ. And to my own Bishop, Lawrence M. Wooten, thank you, Bishop, for the recommendation. Praise God. And to my own First Lady, International Evangelist Shirley Wooten, thank God for her. Amen. And to our own general mother and supervisor, Mother Willie Mae River, to Mother Mae Blake, our assistant supervisor, Mother Barbara McGlewis, and all the women of the Lord. Amen. To each one of you. And to my son in the house. Amen. Elder Nelson Watts, Superintendent Nelson Watts, Jr. We thank God for the jurisdiction and our church family and friends. To God be the glory. Amen. Moving very briefly. Amen. Amen. Just in a little funny note, I said, you know, it takes an old lady like me about 10 minutes to get up out the seat. Praise God. But I thank God for the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Second King, the sixth chapter, the 24th verse says, it came to pass after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered his host and went up and besieged Samaria. The devil struck again. And they were in great famine in Samaria. Now, the situation in Samaria was extreme, tight, grievous, causing unthinkable suffering, extreme hunger, Folk paying outrageous prices for pigeon dung and eating donkey heads. Women reduced to cannibalism, boiling and eating their own children. The king was helpless and he was hopeless. He ripped his clothes and threw up his hands and blamed it all on Elisha, the prophet of God. But Elijah had already heard from God. And the Bible said that Elijah said, tomorrow, about this time. I said, tomorrow, about this time. Praise God, praise God. There will be a change. Well, in the meantime, there were four men sitting at the entering of the gate. They were lepers. Couldn't go inside because they were unclean. They couldn't if they wanted to because they were rejects, socially unacceptable, emotionally traumatized, raggedly, dirty, smelling, discolored, physically a challenge, missing toes and fingers, and despondent as they were, some decisions had to be made. Well, the men began to reason with themselves. They didn't know it, but God was working on their mind. He said, one to another, we just can't sit here and die. If we go in the city, famine is in the city. We'll die in the city. Well, if we take a chance and go in the camp of the Assyrians, they will either kill us or they'll keep us alive. And so a decision of desperation was made at twilight. The Bible said twilight, they made that decision. Evening had set in. It was just about twilight when they decided to do what they was going to do. Between daylight and nightfall, a time of obscurity, a time where you couldn't see real clear, dusk had set in. My God from glory, the sun was about to set six degrees below the horizon. My God from glory. They could have said, well, if we just hold out until tomorrow, 
everything will be all right. But the Bible said that they rose up at twilight and went into the camp of the my God for glory, not seen where they was going, limping and stumbling, disorientated from hunger, my God from glory, moving toward the camp, moving with another force. And I believe God said, I got this, man. I got this. All I wanted you to do was make a decision. Make a decision. So at twilight, God began to work. God began to operate with every weak step, with every limping gait, with every staggering attempt. They made themselves go toward the camp. And God used the elements of his own creation. When they moved, God moved. When they limped, God moved. And while they was limping, while they were staggering, while they was trying to get to the camp, the Bible said that God created a sound effects and he made their limp sound like chariots. He made their hop horses and the Syrians felt like the Hittites that came. The Egyptians have come and the Bible said that God put them in a panic attack. They got scared. They left everything but it happened at twilight in a pursuit of survivor. They hurt Turn to hope. My God, I'm glory. I'm trying to get through here. A twilight decision. If one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand to flight. I believe that those four put about forty thousand to flight. My God, from glory. Oh, bless His holy name. Now, some of you might have a challenge tonight. And you got to make a twilight decision. My God from glory. It's not always good. Sometimes it's obscurity. Sometimes extreme problems. Sometimes complex situations. Crossroads of decision. But the Bible said there is good news. Good news. Good news. Good news for the sinner. Good news for the weak. Good news for the saints. We have Jesus on our side. He came to bind up the broken heart. He came to heal the broken hearted. He came to set at liberty the captives, to open the prison's doors. And if you got problems, if you got a situation, if you're tired of being shut down, just like those leopards, they were tired of being an outcast. They were tired of being hungry. They were tired of being rejects. If you're tired of the devil, if you're tired of his mess, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Praise God. Praise God. It's already spread and there's already a feast. Ho, oh, that everyone that thirsts come. Let the hungry come. Let them eat. Let them eat. Praise God. The appetite of praise, the fruit of the spirit, the meat of the word, the bread of life. And with joy, I said joy. Hey, hey. Joy. You will draw water out of the wells of salvation. God 